1954, a debate on this station probably proved that television was established as a vital part of our life more than anything else to date. Acting Governor Charlie Johns, his opponent Leroy Collins. Collins has said this single incident coming up elected him governor of Florida. And I was amazed when I came into the studio tonight out on the street to pick up a copy of tomorrow morning's Miami Herald to find that the meeting had already been held. And I, I, I just wanted to ask the acting governor something about this. Now, here's a copy of tomorrow morning's Herald. And it's an official advertisement uh, by acting governor John. And he says, proof that truth is mightier than the syrupy mouthing. Governor John's direct talk to the people of Dade wins wide support. Now, this is in the morning's paper, not this morning. Well, Senator, Colin, wherever you are, we told you what would happen. You asked for it on television last night, and you got it. And that's the sort of advertising that's been prepared and running a local paper two hours before the meeting is held, and I find that I'm already convicted. All right, uh, Senator Collins, acting Governor John. Governor, any statement? I do not have anything to do with any advertisement. I, I, I Not to start with, I mean, I didn't know anything about any advertisement that's going to be put in the paper, because that's not Charlie John's, and the citizens of Florida know it's not Charlie John's. But I've carried on a good, clean, decent campaign, and Leroy knows it. You know, Ralph, Leroy Collins told me when he first came down to Miami before his television program, and he went out on the street to shake hands with people, and he'd say, I'm Leroy Collins. And they'd say, well, uh, what do you want? Who are you? But he said after the program, everybody knew him, and he said that uh, this program, together with the other programs he had on television, helped elect him governor of the state of Florida. Well, we're in the year 1954. Let's keep going. We also installed a new 1,000-foot tower in Hallandale. It was the highest structure in Florida. This was the first 1,000-foot tower ever constructed in Florida. We were quite concerned, as were our engineers, about building a tower of that size, which is as tall as the 150-mile hurricane winds that uh, we have in this area. Now, at this moment, you're uh, giving the instructions, and we switch over to the new tower, Monday, May 17th, 1954. And everybody could see the dramatic difference in their pictures. Our signal went out uh, a further distance. Instead of just covering a very short area, we then went out to where we'd cover from perhaps Fort Pierce all the way down the Keys, over to Fort Myers, and also to uh, Nassau. There was another show in those days, the Lee Dickens Show. This young lady believed excitement made a good program. Here's an excerpt from one of her weekly shows. She walked the wings of a high-flying airplane. She even climbed one time our 1,000-foot tower and went snake hunting. But how's this for thrill? In May 1955, our film cameras were installed in a rented room in a downtown hotel. Working with Miami Crime Commission director Dan Sullivan, we installed a one-way mirror in an adjoining room occupied by an undercover man posing as a bookie. The hotel management had no idea what was afoot. Two Miami policemen made a call on the undercover bookie. What you will see next is part of the on-the-air newscast, May 9, 1955, as we kinescoped it at that time. The pictures are the main evidence in the case. And now watch. First, Sergeant King and Detective E.J. Carberry enter Bookie Ben's room. We pick up the film as Sergeant King is seated on a chair, talking with Moskovitz, who's seated on a bed. The two men converse. Detective Carberry walks by the mirror, partially obscuring the picture. As we pick up the scene, King continues the conversation. At this meeting, King allegedly makes arrangements to have a bag man collect $50 a week protection money from Moscovitz. King arises, shakes Bookie Ben's hand as he prepares to leave. And the most 
dramatic part of the tale. Sound motion pictures of the actual payoff by Bookie Ben to Bagman Monroe. The microphone has been hidden in a telephone. The two men speak in hushed tones. Much of the sound is thus muffled, but you can gather what does happen during the transaction. Watch and listen. <coughs> The two policemen and the cab driver who accepted the alleged payoff were arrested and brought to trial. Through a technicality, they were not convicted. 